Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 Hey, um, stacking bills, Buffalo Soldier, bro. Know that I'm a real motherfucker, dawg. Yeah, hella trill, y'all. I dwell in the no sucker zone. That's the sucker free. Pew, none fuck with me. Chuck a three dame with the buzzer beat the game. Like Pete the Maravich, call me Pistol Pete. Young pumpkin need to tear the bitch up. Rip the fucking handkerchief out, dab my lips up. Chain my pitch up. Hey, yo, pluck the trigger, pinch it. The clip be splashing like curry. Fuck that nigga, fit to port his ass back to Missouri. He whack and he boring. And I be cracking a 40 over his nasty ass corny ass face on sight, dawg. <laughs> Whether in the motherfucking dead of the night, dawg, or the fucking broad ass day glow night, dawg. <laughs> man, it's on and popping. I'm gone and talking shit, man. I'm bucked up. Like Gianna's bitch. <laughs> man, you got me fucked up. <laughs> Yo, honest bitch. It's just cool. A bossy dubiaku dog, man. On um, God, I spit nice, it's astonishing. <laughs> man, even if I ain't fucking got a ring, <laughs> dog, I'm Charles Barkley, <laughs> barking a free, blowing on some fucking Swiss char, God, that broccoli, collard greens, mashallah, you know what I mean? Bada bing, bite the wings off a of bat, Ozzy and Jack. Father, son, holy ghost, man Triangle offense if you're woody toast, man He go the most, man, yo Yo, slice the fucking mango off him Cubano with the motherfucking spoti Odi dopolis is fuck, man I'm supposed to go hard, so I do that True that Beat the beat up Till it blue black Fucking Jake front Fucking through that, right? Dang, what the fuck, dog? Thought you knew that <laughs> That track that you did that we'll play at the oh, beginning, yeah. I fucking love that. That was produced by um, my friend John, John Zayat, shout out. He goes by Jay Rabbit. He, uh, he just graduated from college, but um, he, like, his and my friendship with our friend Dan, like, your music really brought us together as friends. Like, that's what we listened to when we started hanging out. Like, that was really a, a big deal. So it's crazy to hear you rap over one of his beats and I know he's going to be excited because he doesn't do as much music anymore. And Works. I wish you would. It's a good ass beat. I liked it, man. It, it says something in uh, Russian. It was named something Russian. Yeah. He, uh, <laughs> he loves Russian. He just speaks Russian and reads it, but yeah. But he's not Russian. No, he's not Russian. Nope. He's from oh, Cape right. Cod. We all are. We're originally from Cape oh. Cod. Cape Cod. Well, see, you know, I feel like I know someone from Cape Cod. Uh, uh, Will, uh, you know the dude from uh I don't know if you remember this band called the Amazing Baby. That sounds familiar, but I don't. They used to they used to tour with uh MGMT. Okay. All right. And they do they do like kind of like, you know, uh uh what do you call it? Like a Brooklyn hipsterized version of psych rock, you know. Oh, but yeah, it, yeah. I, I like this shit, but bruh, the lead singer, he was from uh Cape Cod. He was from Cape Well, that's like Vampire Weekend had so many songs about Cape Cod. Were, like, were, yeah. Yeah, for all yeah. Which is I don't know why, but when you're when you're originally from there, it's not as exciting as the, the yeah, spots not, you get out to be. Yeah, because everyone who, who's there, they just like work at the spots that all the vacationing man had. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah mm. Like growing up in a vacation town, it's like all right, the winter's here. And exactly. There's a big uh, not to get all, but there's a big like drug problem on Cape. Like there's an HBO documentary called Heroin Cape Cod USA. Like couple long breaks off drinking but now i might like do like glass of wine with dinner or something like really like uh me and my girl right now uh she also been pretty chill off drinking we'll buy like a bottle of wine and like days later we'll be like shit we still got like wine left off of one bottle you know like we really been super mellow off that because i don't know especially on uh the whole quarantine shit is just like drinking is like what's the point dude i'm just gonna like be here yeah. <laughs> still like with a headache later so just save the you know cut out the we just smoke a lot more weed probably that's what but, i do too yeah because I, I i bought like a pack of beer and it's been in my fridge for like two weeks i haven't because at the beginning of quarantine i was like drinking a lot and then i lost yeah. a, i lost a good amount of weight uh during yeah. it. i was like i can't go back like mm -hmm. i feel like you can either go one of two ways when the world shuts down you know exactly i mean 
Yeah, that's just not going to be sustainable once it turned out to be like peak oil and fucking Mad Max and shit. No, you know. Yeah. Uh, you can't really be drunk all day off that, running around, breaking no. into 7 Elevens, all that shit. You watch all those like old movies, not like pirates or whatever. They were just fucked up. Like sure. the uh, yeah, Wild yeah. West. They didn't give a shit. They were just drinking whiskey all day. Yeah. <laughs> No, nah, actually, you know what? Maybe that's maybe it'd be like fuck it, anything at that point too, because you know it's the fucking apocalypse. So I'm sure it's a it's a mixed bag. I'm sure there's no hard fast rule you could make about what happens You've when we all go staying busy. Back. You've been staying busy. You've been painting. You've been uh, scul- uh, sculpting, making. Yeah. Um, it's it's awesome. How long yeah. have you been doing that for a while, or did you pick that up over this past year? The sculpting is new. Um, not really sculpting. It's you know found. You yeah. know, found hot, hot gluing hell of found objects to various shit. Making and it look dope. Painting. Yeah. It looked tight, though, you know, painting, you know, a little paint on the thing. You know. Yeah. But uh, I do, I'm like liking some of the smaller, like, ready-made style. I'm, I'm, uh, and those ones sell hella quick. And then I've even got some commissions off, off of that stuff. Though. But uh, it's also, like, hella, it's, like, too, too many physical objects. I kind of prefer uh, the smaller drawings. Or, you know, I mean, a big painting is chill every now and again, but I was like, sometimes they start stacking up, you know, trying to, yeah. trying to do commissions only off the big stuff now. But I got maybe a couple more big things to do and then do commissions only for a minute. But yeah, I was doing a, I was doing the drawings and the paintings for, I was doing the drawings since, I don't even know when, uh, it might have been 2013 or something, 12. Oh, well, you have such a unique style. I mean, shout out, you have... Your piece right here. I mean, it's in the background of every. You have such a unique style. 2013 isn't that long ago, though, in the grand oh, yeah. scheme of things. No, I'm just talking about selling them. But uh, oh, I, yeah, oh. yeah, I've been drawing and painting and shit since I was a youngster, man. I, you know, I little dabbled in my little graffitis and whatnot, but then made little uh comic books I'd photocopy and shit and try and sell and all this stuff. I was like always trying to get a little art like a sideway art hustle what right when the when the music start started like kind of cracking off i was like trying to figure out how to like how do i just uh parlay this into some art shit too just so i can start and i mean there's no nah, i got a couple of shows out you know i got some like a legit you know i did the the shit at the dame dash's gallery when we had that one in um in uh chinatown oh I did, yeah i did a show there that was a nice one but uh awesome. for the most part for the most part, I was just like, you know, it's like easier to just like do the shit whenever, make it at the crib and then sell it immediately on Instagram. <laughs> it's like a less rigmarole and all that. But, you know, I know I, I'll probably do some more stuff in galleries. I've done some gallery shit that I dug that it's a, it's a different adds a different vibe to it. You can kind of act like it's something more serious or whatever. But uh, that's your mind. That seems like I don't want to speak for you, but that seems like what you like to do is like quick turnaround, like. You know, you put your effort yeah. in, but like, I I love the albums that you've been doing, like that you've been putting out. It's th- three this year, and you put out what, like eleven last year, something like but, that. It's like the Bandcamp shit. They they had those yeah. Fridays, and uh, you know they they got the corniest name, but uh, the fucking the best percentage out of all those streaming. You know, it's not streaming; it's just downloaded. I guess it's streaming now too. I don't even fucking. But yeah, uh, out of all the shit, they got the best percentage. So, you know, I usually go with that. And then they were doing the full, all the profits go to the artist shit. So, like, literally, I've been on every one of those. I'm like, fuck, I'll drop a new one every fucking time. Fuck it, you know? And they're but, all uh, great. Like, I was just listening to Automatic Flowers, and there's so many great tracks on uh, that. Like, yeah. you, you said you were just, re- did you record one yesterday? Uh, I recorded 17 joints yesterday. Damn. I, uh, <laughs> Uh, Cause I, you know, I do those like hundred dollar freestyles sometimes, but uh, yeah. mm-hmm. then I needed, I needed like uh, some quick ones. Cause when you, I've, I discounted it down to 20 one time and got like hell of them. I made like a few tapes off those. And then, uh, and so I was like, let me do that. Cause I was like, uh, automatic flowers was, uh, I had a nail in my tire and I needed to get a new tire. You open and, up the album saying that. <laughs> like I explained this shit. Yeah. I mean, you see, it's the first joint. It explains the whole reason why you're hearing this tape. It was like, uh, I was like, fuck it. I need a, I uh, saw so I did that $33 freestyle uh, sale, which is, I mean, you know, it is what it is. And then a uh, fucking pick like, you know, some of my favorites out of those batches and, and do a little tape out of that. So I'm going to do a tape. Uh, the tape actually, I mean, I'm if you don't mind, I might throw the one I did for you on this tape. If you, uh, oh, I would love to, I would love that, of course. Yeah, for sure, yeah. 
I don't know if but, you, y'all get them. Yeah, we'll talk about all that. With yeah, no, but that you do. It's like your art. You like the the quick turnaround, like the yeah. Do you yeah, see it as the same way, like putting together an out al- like a full album is like a gallery where it's like you just want to do something quick, like a quick turnover? Yeah, well, I mean, um, yeah, there's a there's definitely that. I feel like a lot of the gallery shows have been like, oh, I finally have a space this big. Let me just find like, you know, uh, panels and surfaces and sometimes objects and blah, blah, blah and, and canvases, et cetera, et cetera that will fit in here and then I'll just kind of like fill, fill up the space, you know, like I just treat it like, you know, that. And then I think the, the, I, it's kind of a similar, yeah, I, I think it's similar, like overarching conceptualization, like, well, I, I gotta, you know, make an album's worth of stuff and then kind of like get them all feeling like they belong together, you know, mm. you know, it, but uh, yeah, I mean, when I, I kind of, I see it almost more on a, it almost feels more like a, like a writing, like a like collection of you know of writing or something it literally is to you know to a degree or you know just little freestyle moments and this and that yeah. but and musical moments that you know like you're trying to let stuff breathe and you know throw hooks for some people need that shit i you know i'm not i, I can kind of care less about a hook sometimes but uh you know sometimes you just you know something springs in mind you might yeah. throw a little melody in there it's nice for people to hang on to that type of shit well, but that's um what's so great about your music is the like i mean just your writing or your your ability i mean probably one of my favorite songs of all time is open letter like i listen to that track more than anything and i love the stream of consciousness like you don't need uh, like they're like essays all and i don't want to speak yeah. for your music but it's oh. like i love that i love that do you get sick of working on something for too long like a single thing that's probably what it is to a degree. I mean, I don't mind coming back to a thing I'd already finished and polishing it up and adding this. And But I always kind of like first takes the best, even if, I mean, I do, I do like, you know, second, third, fourth takes sometimes, you know, but mm. I, I try to aim for the first take usually, you know, and like try and keep it very like fluid and close to like almost like a cyphery feel and like that kind of like the energy of like, not quite knowing how it's about to fit or what it is exactly. And then you might have to fill up this space with a little freestyle or like you, you realize you did it in a different flow from the time before, like when you had wrote it down and you're like, Oh, this is different from how I wrote it down. So then it, then it changes the space of all the rest of it. And like, I like playing around with that, but like letting whatever happens in those like processes be like, you know, uh, I don't like to overwork or gild the lily too much, but I do like sitting down with a song sometimes and trying to make, oh, let's polish it up. That, that has a funness to it. But I think what I never dug about like the quote unquote music industry proper is how much of that. I think they get super precious about, okay, go back in with a, and then, and, and, you know, and then like the rollout and you got to wait and, and, a, and then like, oh, you can't drop nothing because you, you, they got to have, you got to be fucking hungry for it. And all this like stuff that's just like, you know, it's like, people treat these like general, you know, good practices type thing, best practices type things. They try and turn it into like a, this is the fucking objective fucking rule. You gotta go by the rules, you know, like uh, yeah. and that, that type of shit is, uh, yeah. I mean, I, I like a lot of fucking loose ass rap anyway. So, I mean, you know, it's like, I kind of just do what I like to listen to a lot of times. It's like, I don't care about a hook, but I'm you know, like doom was one of my favorite rappers still is, you know, uh, rest in peace and all that stuff. Rest in peace, but, yeah. uh, yeah, but uh, you know, if he's a perfect example of like, bro, don't have hooks on like whole, you know, whole albums with no hooks and shit. You know, I was like, and I was never mad at that. I was just wanted to hear do rap some more. You know, like, yeah. Uh, and you get to you get to flex in different ways and like actually get it to you know. There's there's sixteen bars can sixteen bars is great. It's a great way to like atomize and distill it into a thing you know and then if you have three with hooks and a and a bridge i understand why form is you know like why people want that and why and what it delivers and like what's good about that but i i always dug like i also think you can fully she can be compelling without those rules set up for it you know and you kind of like yeah. get to wander off and like do something you know like totally i like the unconventional unconventional the un the uncon- I can't speak. Yeah, unconventional. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm stoned too. I just was smoking <laughs> before. I know, yeah. But no, uh, I. it seems like when something's like 
it's lowest common denominator, you know, like when things yeah. are, it, it's trying to be mass produced or put out or like, it's trying to appeal to the most wide variety of people, which yeah. of course is then going to distill it down into yeah. lowest common denominator. Yeah, exactly. It's a kind of, it, sometimes kids suffer for it and uh, you had to, yeah, there's the, a lot of it is too much like anticipating what someone might want or think or, you know, and, and there's, I, I think that there's, you know, I'm not going to shit on it as a, I like it too, but I also just, there's something that I, I that I really draws me to like the shit where it's like, this is just, you know, I was just rapping, you know, and this is the thing, you know, and then you, you can add the details and like, you know, other like samples and beats and, you know, collage elements and effects and all that stuff. But like, uh, yeah, I try not to overwork anything too hard and just kind of keep it moving. Cause there's, you know, it's always going to be more stuff. Like the more you, you know, just get it off, the more you get more in, you know, like, yeah. Ah. But I mean, in your, time in the mainstream like you were influent like your music's influential like it is it's like do you enjoy doing it like having it on your own now because i mean yeah. it's influential i mean your stuff you, it's yeah. crazy to see that how it has affected modern music yeah i guess i i sometimes had some uh i sometimes was like i don't think we are necessarily doing like like I don't know. I, I, I like I like a lot of the joints we did, but I, I, I think some of the music, it felt overrated to me at the time. I was like, why y'all like this so much? You know, like this is just like I feel like everything we did, it already existed in like, you know, across multiple rap projects or specific rappers doing this or specific groups doing that. Like, I don't think we were particularly trailblazy per se so much as maybe the attitude was slightly different or like the uh the lyrical Maybe. ability that's another thing that is lost like you like your lyrical ability and all the lyrical ability of the group <clears throat> surpassed a lot of other people who are trying to do that same thing i guess i mean you know i'll take the compliment man but uh, <laughs> yeah I, I feel like there's a lot of fools doing it i i, I still i always thought it was like i always felt a little too much sometimes and uh it was like one of those ones where I, I would have preferred almost less attention just to have a little more freedom, but I, mm -hmm. I can't, I can't be mad at it because I, I dug the, uh, you know, I dug the money to, yeah. and it, you know, and it's fun to do shows with hella fools and you know, like I understand all, and I like, you know, I want people to listen to, I want, you know, yeah. but at the same time I would, uh, you know, as long as I can live off it, you know, like, and even if I can't live, if I, you know, if I can't live off, I'm gonna still do it. But like, as long as I can live off it, I'm not really tripping, you know, like I want to get my right. bread, good, you know, but I like got multiple goals. I'm not like worried about that per, per se. I would, you know, obviously everyone wants to have more security in their life and blah, 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 blah. But like, I would rather have a life where I'm not beholden to like this, that, and the third thing where I like have a little more freedom and, you know, like the freedom is, you know, what people want money for in the first place. And then if you get locked into a thing where you're making a bunch of money, but it's not really freeing you, then like, what is that? That's like not worth it, you know? So um, do you think it was the best move to like step in and step out? Yeah, I mean, that, I, I kind of wanted to quit earlier. And uh, I even agreed to do a few last shows. I, I agreed to do the last American dates, with I, which I did do. And then when I was about to get on the plane to to... I guess Munich or whatever for the the European leg of the tour. I was like, um, I was like, nah, I can't. I like, I, I don't want to do this shit. I, I missed the flight was the first thing, and then they're like, you got to wait like eight hours. I'm like, I'm gonna wait eight hours to get on this fucking plane to like uh, go to this thing that I didn't want to go to in the first place that I only agreed to do. Go, you know, like yeah. And it, it was so I was just like, yeah, never mind. I'm not going. See you. Pop, what you know, flipped the switch in your head when you were like, I'm done. It's over. Uh man, I mean, I don't, I don't want to get into it's like some. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to get into the whole Stuff shit. There, I mean, there was, there was one happens. specific. There was one specific night. Where I was like, I, I fucking quit, bro. I was like, uh, mm. and I, I don't need to get into the details. No, of, that of course, shit. yeah, no. But uh, but yeah, and then after that night, I meant it. But then I, I worked out the details with uh our manager, being like, I'll do, you know. So everyone, we're back. Ooh. There's technical difficulties. We're back now. But I had a Jeep Wrangler and I sold it and I got. I drive a lot. I'm a stand-up comedian, so I drive oh, a lot to perform, you know, because I have just yeah. show up. And I got a Subaru Forester, 
which is mm. like the biggest change and difference of like oh, energy of cars. Like I had a four door black Jeep Wrangler. Like I yeah, that's that shit. Now I'm driving like a mom Subaru. Oh man, yeah, yeah. You some buzz about that too. <laughs> yeah, I, I switched up to a Ford Explorer for a while, but I kind of like that one. Uh, that was tight, except for it just straight died on me. It was hella old though. I just like I got it for like the like the i was living off a dirt road in mexico so i just needed some off-roady type shit cheap yeah. you know and it, that was you know it was it lasted for a minute though and i brought it up here i was driving around like do you like making really like, music for the needs like you're like i make music for necessity like if shit happens yeah I music for that I'm like not, I mean, I'd like to have a little more of a nest egg cracking right now, but, uh, you know, I had some little money dips here and there, but, uh, uh, I don't mind do it. I, I appreciate that. I can, you know, like I yeah. kind of like find it like cute and funny, but at the same time, like, yeah, no, nah, I mean like a little slight, slightly higher paychecks right there have always been enjoyable, but yeah, some, somewhere between, like I was saying, like, um, as long as there's an element of, actual freedom to it you know as long as a, I don't know I don't want to have to like uh, yeah hard to put it but yeah are you working on like a project or right now you're just focusing on the art and everything yeah I mean I figured I might do like a an album where I take some time to like you know come back to each song and like you know do a whole process of it like a album me album and like get all the shit off squared away put it on actual vinyl i haven't done nothing on physical in a while uh so like uh yeah i don't know i mean probably do that at some point i was going to do it this year or last year and then uh the pandemic had got the fucking band kept fridays rolling and i started just dropping like shit and then like liking that fast hey i haven't had time to just, like sit down and do the longer longer stuff uh you know more uh you know focused uh et cetera, et cetera stuff uh I figure like it happens in due time. I like to trust the organic, uh, what you know, whatever it is, you know, I, like I don't mind a quick pace. Stuff. I kind of like it is my main thing is the quick pace. Uh, I almost feel like I, I'm in this lane. I might as well kind of like, you know, do what it, you know, do it till it at least doesn't feel like it's until I don't want to anymore. Until like it doesn't seem like it's serving me or whatever the fuck you, yeah. yeah. Mm. Yeah, and then you can kind of focus on other things. I mean, you do so much stuff. I mean, are you like you? You're an author. You have you. You do so much that it might be good to be able to like focus on the other things too. Yeah, you know, I, I fucking you know. You're a I father. Find a time. You know, like you have you have a life outside of just mute making music. Mm -hmm. Fully that. Yeah. Um. Yeah. You know, like I, I pretty much like. Uh, I don't mind like sitting around sometime but i think pandemic got me a little restless restless too but i think i was always kind of like a, you know i can like do this or that for a few days here and there but i always like come back to some sort of like a you know creative practice of some sort you know if it's if it's like uh if i feel like tired of the music i'm at least do you know some sort of visual art situation or if i'm tired of that i might sit down and write a little you know i can't uh it's got to go somewhere you know like yeah. i feel like if i had just you know kind of pick one but I, i'm just trying to like you know trying to follow the the organic uh you know the organic interior of the you know art making uh a spirit type thing you know yeah do you have a routine at all like a mm. daily routine or i mean to a degree i guess following the, this or that routine i feel like it's always like slightly uh but yeah, I mean, I don't you like know. force yourself to write every day or paint every day or like oh, like a, like an artist routine, not yeah. so, not out of it's more like a habit. Like uh, yeah, I just figure I don't ever intentionally be like, here's my time to, mm -hmm. but uh, you know, but I yeah, yeah I'll be, I usually just end up like one or you know, like uh, I feel like I had uh, I'm sure I, I don't know. I always kind of compulsively would doodle or drum, you know, I always kind of like kind of have a busy body element to my, uh, you know, I have a restlessness in me, I think. So, uh, so yeah, I basically, you know, I think it always comes from that. I think that's like the energy of the whole music, you know, it's like, it's good to refine that sometimes. I've done a lot of projects where you got to refine that more, but I also kind of like letting that free and like, you know, I always do, you know, like, like all the little, 
you know, free jazz, you know, I'm the beat poets and all them shit. You know, like, yeah. I, 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 fools that's like, or just like, even like rap that's like more freestyle. You could tell they were just like fluid in the thing, you know, like. Um, I love that. Yeah, especially the jazz yeah. is like, that's why I love jazz or uh, that's why I love comedy. I love comedy because it's the in the moment-ness of it. Yeah. Or rap, it's like in the moment is yeah. enjoyable because if you put enough time and effort into something, if you put your 10,000 hours in, then in the moment is going to be better than, you know, yeah. either you either wait for, you can wait for the muse to come or you can just be like, here's the, you know, sometimes it's just ready to, you're ready to create. Yeah, I think the more you make it a habit, you know, the more you just, it, the easier it comes to you and the more you do anything, the easier it comes to you. And yeah, the 10,000 hour thing that, yeah, it's just, just like, do the thing. And I think, yeah, I mean, that's how anything, any anything happens. It's just like someone feels for whatever reason is compelled to do this or that. And then they fucking do that for an amount of time. And then, you know, I, I don't know, I'm being hella vague right now. I guess I'm on my third blunt for the, for the podcast. So maybe I can. You can <laughs> reel it in. I just, I just had AA Rashid do mushrooms on the podcast, like the last. Hell episode, yeah! So Shit, yeah, you can smoke blunts. It doesn't matter. Yeah, I definitely. I've, I've done some like pretty drugged out interviews here and there, but I don't know if I, I don't always like go back and look at how it got edited or anything. So I'm like not always We're gonna sure edit about this to make you look so bad. No, I'm just yeah, I know. Make, yeah, <laughs> we don't edit this off. at all. I mean, we might do the technical difficulties, but I like showing the full uh, scope of a conversation because it's not. I try sure. not to do like interview, interview. Like I like yeah, just kind of talking. Prefer, yeah, I was like, uh, I would prefer that type of shit too. Like you that. used to do interviews. Uh, you used to interview people on Noisy, right? Yeah, I did. Like I even know like three or four of those but yeah they they basically just you know they would offer me some bread to do it i'm it wasn't like the type of thing that i wanted to particularly even do but then uh, I know, didn't, yeah i didn't like not want to do it but it was just like all right yeah i'll do this shit yeah i'm fucking you know chop it up with cool keith or whatever you know it's like yeah. fan of bruh anyway that is pretty cool. Cool. Like, I love, like, he was one of those, we're talking the non-conventional, just like, I mean, he oh, was, he was, he was, cra- I mean, he's, cra- even as, as he's just crazy. Yeah. No, I mean, unconventional, amazing. Completely. Yeah. Just completely bananas and saying, like, I, that's, that's who I would compare uh, Lil B to right when he was popping and people weren't getting it. They didn't understand. It. I was like, what do you mean? Like, it's like, it's like cool Keith almost. But he does it more based. Uh, obviously, it's a different thing. But that's that was kind of like the touchstone where people be like, "Oh, okay, I get it now." But like you know, some people is like you know, especially older head type situation. You need like, "Oh, what's the reference? What's the?" Uh, which is kind of like, well, you know, it was new at some point. How come you? But you know, people get all you get. You you don't have the time and the energy to to like try and get something if it don't actually hit right off top. And I understand all that shit. Anyway, that being the case, Cool Keith was a huge fucking um was a huge fucking uh influence on you why man I'm fucking those there's a couple of them albums that was like that fucking dr octagon, you know, octagon so black funny. elvis black elvis was oh man he has some ones dude he's he's dudes out out of his fucking mind man he's, i i got a let's see I, oh, I was on a sav kill i don't even know if that fool put that shit out um sav kills i don't know if you know that fool that's a, yeah uh, that, yeah mm-hmm. yeah yeah that dude he's a maniac though he had you know, he was uh, he was doing some shit with uh, was a Jizza maybe. Oh wow! But he yeah he got he got fucking bars and he got hella joints and like fucking like a lot of like New York history of you know he, he's a cool dude. But uh yeah he uh he got me on a track with uh cool Keith one time but I don't think that shit ever came out. Damn. Um, well you you got to drop that that would be an amazing. Yeah. I'd love to hear you rap with cool Keith. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I put it on one of the I like. Dropped a bunch of unreleased shit and then pulled some of it back because it was like, ah, I don't know. Mm. like some of it was like unfinished feeling or blah, blah, blah. And then, yeah, but shit. Yeah, I might. So you that. listen to know. stuff that's not just like, like I like trappier stuff. I like the stuff coming out of Flint and Detroit right now. Like I love all styles of rap. Like I love, I love like Lil B when that was like the, his era. Like, yeah, when he was really, uh, yeah, that shit was crazy with him. Yeah. Releasing, well, it's like the releasing the hundred song mixtape. Yeah, definitely. Like, yeah, I mean, I was like, shit, I'm gonna do that too because I was looking at, 
I was like going through my shit. It's like, I can do a hundred songs too, man. Shit. Fuck it. Let's do it. You know, you, but that's like a lot. Do you uh, write uh, or freestyle your shit? Cause I mean, you're, you're great lyrics either way, but yeah, I mean, I do a lot of writing. I do like, I feel like the bulk of it, like all, all my favorite bars that I look back on, I was like, that was good. Usually written sometimes occasionally, I, you know, that's the thing is like, I'll write it maybe quick or like not think about it too hard or switch the beat up, or like switch it to a different beat or that or this, or, you know, and then at that point you have to, and when you're recording it, you're like reading it out loud. Sometimes, sometimes for the first time, because you sometimes you're in the studio and like they're doing the same thing to the snare for like hella long. So you just like writing with it. And, and then, you know, whatever, whatever it is, you're like, you, when you get to the recording part is like, a, um, there's, you know, you'd be like, you, you might edit live, you know, you'd be like, yeah. I'm gonna say it different from that or then you say something different and then you're like fuck i gotta do a couple bars just to tie it back to this thing that's coming up or you know like mm -hmm. so the, the, i feel like you know if you if it sounds freestyle it's probably a moment like that where i'm just like uh doing like a sort of a, like a live edit to it uh to the thing i have written down but i, I prefer to write definitely i have like uh when i was doing the hundred dollar freestyle sale at first first like shit damn near a hundred i think uh of them were freestyle freestyles I think mm -hmm. more, yeah and then um and then i had then i was like i listened back to some of them and be like because some of the beats were great i was like shit man i like should have wrote to this and then i was like you know i'm gonna just start writing to all of them just because you get it got to a point beats? Where, oh yeah i mean i got a lot of beats where i like was not fucking with it and i just was like okay well how do i make this into a joint that i can fuck with yeah. sometimes sometimes you ask you know like yeah you know, i don't know you ask them to send you another one or you or you know be like I can you take yeah. the cake this annoying shit out and it's <laughs> like it would be so much better if you just let it be like the raw this thing or so you can talk to the fools or sometimes i'll just like pitch it down or ask them to delay or pitch it up like slow it down like maybe at you know like i'll be it in the studio i'll be like hey can i like throw a synth or you know like you start mm -hmm. messing with the you just treat it like raw material if you don't like it, you know? But yeah. I, usually, usually I, I try to, I mean, just to minimize the amount of work I'm doing, <laughs> just rap on this shit, you know? I'll rap yeah. on some stuff where I'm like, I don't really like this beat. And then, you know, halfway through writing to it, I'm like, actually, I actually like this beat a lot. Or like, I don't really like this beat. And then you record it and then like, listen back and you're like, actually, I like it. Now. Or so, you know, it's like, no, but... I wasn't sure if like you're like because usually it's your fans asking for it, so you want yeah to, exactly you want, like you want your fans to have good taste in music. You're like oh shit, seventy of a hundred of the people are shady. Producers. Yeah, exactly, I need exactly. To, I need to inspire more. I know. I was like worried when I first started doing. It. I was like oh, I'm gonna get so many trap, so many trap beats uh, doing this, and you know, but like people, I mean, more often than not, I'm like damn slap. Like just go crazy. Like some of these fools. Oh. Um, yeah. I mean, but yeah, like uh I'm 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 thankful at least that I, that I fuck with for the most part, like everything that I get. Um, and mm -hmm. I'm continually like continually like always gonna be like a few every time I do those little quick sales. And even the 20 and 30, I mean, it's like probably oftentimes there's like some repeat fools that are like, oh, yeah, I got you, I got you like a couple of years back on a hundred dollar one. Let me do a 20 or a 33 or, you know, like, yeah, um, I probably could do 50, though, man, because uh, even though a bunch come in and it's quick, then it's like, shit, now I got to do like fucking 40 tra tracks right now. You know, it's like how long's the yeah. turnover on one? Uh, It's like. If I could get in the studio right away, it's quick. But if, you know, if like I don't record myself because I, I just never I'm always like I'm like very uh, I feel like I have a lot of production experience and like I play instruments and I like have a, you know, but I computer wise, you sit me in front of the, like a computer with like a legit program, you know, like I, I use like GarageBand when I'm doing little this and that, but I don't like how I sound when I record myself. I can never get it right, you know. I need an engineer, you know, I got a couple of homies that like do it that are good, you know, so I yeah. usually, you know, go to go to one of the homies and, you know, and it's easier too because then you can kind of just do it like a whole bunch. You're not worrying about let me turn the fucking thing on. You, know? you just kind of, you know, burn one, chop it up with the homie, and I rap understand. on the thing, you know, it's That's like a funner session. producing this podcast. I just want to talk to you. I don't ah. have to worry about any <laughs> of the other stuff. <laughs> but, 
Yeah. Do you still play? Like, do you play music non-rap? Like, you you're a drummer. Like, do you play other stuff still? Yeah. Um. Yeah. I mean, drums is kind of my my main one. But the one I started on was guitar. My my dad uh, knows a little tiny bit of guitar. Um, he used to uh, when he came to the states. Uh, he lived in Chicago and he lived right by a like a music store. Uh, like music musical instrument store. And he, like him and his homies would kick it in there. I don't know if you know the the Paul Butterfield blues band out of Chicago, but it's like, a, no. it's like, a, it's an interesting one. Cause it's like a half black, half white band. Like okay. two, of, two of them are black and two of them are white. And it's in, at that time period, I guess somewhat rare for that time period. Not really, you know, you see it all, all across American, but yeah. like it was a, it was very like straight up electric Chicago blues gets a little bit rocky, you know, and it's mm-hmm. good. I like the stuff, but it's like, they got a, I had two of the records. I mean, my my pops had a nice record collection at one point, sold it um, when I was still a kid, but uh, then pretty much replaced it with CDs. So, but then I started like messing with records for a while and it ended up selling mine. I kind of want to get records again, though. It's like way better industry. Whatever, who cares? The, those yeah, fools vinyl industry is bumping. Yeah, it's booming. Mostly because yeah. of Griselda. I feel like Griselda picked that shit right back up. Yeah, I mean, I think it had been popping for a minute is the thing. I think... Uh, I don't know what it what it is. I think it's um people miss like the album experience where the record forces you to, to listen to the whole shit usually because you don't want to unless you got your little like two tables set up or whatever at the crib mm-hmm. and the DJing or whatever. But like the whole oh let me put the whole uh but I think people miss like album experiences you know like uh and it is it's like a has a better sound typically than CD you know if you you barely notice it but like sometimes it really does feel warm or you like. You know, there's, I, I appreciate the whole romanticism to it, but I, I think what I dug about it was like, oh, I don't have to like, oh, what do I put on next? You know, like I put on like a album, flip it over, hear the whole thing, you know, like, and then you start thinking, then you really, I started buying a lot more jazz when I got the records because it was like, that's what I want to listen to for the whole way through, you know, like, then yeah. I started getting, you know, it gets your whole thinking about the music in a different way. Because uh, like, what are you into? Uh, oh. Man, I like I like a lot of stuff, but uh, I kind of like, you know, old older not older i guess it was like the the 60s and the 50s a little bit like 60s 70s really i like when it started to get weird too you know like i like warnett coleman and yeah again you know chicago uh chicago art ensemble and sun Ra and like all the weirdos but i and uh cecil taylor cecil taylor i don't know the mm-hmm. piano dude uh yeah uh, sun Ra was amazing that was sun Ra, was, yeah, yeah. But I also like uh, I like Coltrane because he can do that and he can like you know do bebop, hard bop, cool jazz. You know he he can do everything. He's like a fucking um, technician with it. You know so he can. But he also knows how to wild out. Like you know he's he's. I mean Coltrane might be my my favorite. I also fucking Alice Coltrane is right up there. I mean they almost tied. Sometimes it's, it's hard to pick. Like uh, I, I mean some days Alice Coltrane is my favorite. And sometimes John Coltrane is my favorite. I think them as a team is good. They got a, you know, they got some um Pharaoh Sanders, uh uh another one. And then man, yeah. And then they got stuff with with bruh. I don't know, it's hard to pick a one. But yeah, I like I kind of like it all. But I like stuff from the era right where like right before it started getting super freaky and free jazz. And I like uh, you know, like Miles Davis bitches brew era when it started to get a little more uh what do you call it? Um, but you like American jazz. I like a lot of American jazz. I do fuck with um, I do fuck with jazz from everywhere else. I just don't know it as well. I guess. Yeah, I'd say I my had, favorite, like my favorite's Fila Kuti. I love. Oh, Fila like, Kuti. Like, yeah, for so yeah. and just Fisoli, whole, yeah. like the Afri- I like a lot of Brazilian stuff. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. I got I got to mess with some more Brazilian, and I do like hella Bra- like Brazil's crazy. Yeah, I mean Fela is definitely. I mean out of. Yeah, I mean, I, I definitely need to dig more about, like, African jazz, because that shit, every time I do hear African jazz, it's bananas. It's crazy, it's like, yeah. It's just, like, such a large world that I'm, like, uh, I have a, had a little bit more of a footing. I mean, like, you know, I had we had some jazz records when I was a kid and, and jazz CDs and stuff when we when we switched to CDs. And all that it stuff. is really. But, uh, so I feel, no, what were you saying? Sorry. It's just like, oh, it's really up. Uh, okay, I got to go. Oh, wait, no. Okay, that's no, good. Oh, it's really like what? 
just people uh, it's it's really about who you, if you're lucky enough to listen to good stuff as a kid uh, sometimes like my dad yeah. was a drummer like a metal word, drummer, word. but he Whoa. would play me like jazz i mean i saw wu-tang yeah. clan with him when i was 12 years old word. i knew all the word like ice yeah, Cube when i was six yeah like all right. that yeah. stuff yeah. but some Definitely. people you see oh you just listen to acdc all day word, <laughs> like, word. Yeah. i mean yeah but it's like sometimes those fools got some like uh, a different they they got a they might not have the breadth but they got a depth sometimes they'll pull out some shit that I never heard you know like there's certain types of people you know like that you got like raised with maybe like less eclectic but you went deep on the one thing or like the handful of things or you know like I I always like chopping up with people that like know music or like like you know like you know I like chop like I like talking about music in general you know it's like a want a fun conversation usually but uh yeah I always dig when someone like knows stuff. You know, no, you know, everyone always can put you on to some shit you never heard before, mm -hmm. no matter what. You know, so it's like there's so much shit out there. And then, yeah, I mean, I used to play drums in a in a few different punk rock bands. And you'd be, you know, it's like a pretty white scene, you know. So, you, you know, chopping up with people that really don't know rap sometimes, you, they'll be surprised when you can, you know, play some shit that's like punky, that shit that they might like or whatever, whatever. Or, you know, I mean, there's plenty of people that fuck with punk that know rap hella well as well. You know, there's like a there's a lot of across a lot of crossover and all that stuff but uh that wasn't even what i was trying to say it was like when you run into like a, it was it would be tied as so you run into like a super kind of like white like you know rednecky kind of guy who like yeah who's like oh man you out there in the yeah you out there in the, the you know whatever the hell you i don't even know like it's like uh but then they'll put you on to some like crazy hardcore out of like you know cutty little cities and like i don't know you know like uh Do it's you, like a yeah, yeah. No, what are you saying? Do you still play punk? Like, do you still play punk? Like, to a degree. I mean, I haven't recorded or played any punk, and like anything. Like, I don't know. It's been a couple of years, but uh, I still, I actually have a couple of songs that I had wrote on guitar that I wanted to record. But I was waiting until I got a. There's a there's a drum set over the the homies' crib. I was thinking I was wanted to just record it there, but uh, I figured I'd probably have to call up other bro. I don't know. It's like. Recording with instruments is usually a, a little more of like, ah, oh, you gotta call people up, and set this <laughs> up, and uh, you know, you are like spur of the moment. You're like, yeah, oh, I, get in there, do yeah. it. Get, uh, yeah, I exactly. Paint this. I want to wanna glue this stuff. Yeah, I exactly. Get I like, yeah. yeah, yeah. Even the glue shit was like, oh, this is too much fucking shit. I don't want to. Like I got, but then I, I got a yeah. glue gun in. Uh, there, yeah, <laughs> exactly. You wait for it to get hot and shit, Lawrence. <laughs> You know, but uh, but then I got too many ideas with the 3D shit, so I had to keep working with it for a bit. But uh, I definitely want to put it away. It's getting annoying. But um, well, but yeah, you, I, you wrote books, but it is like not it's like short vignettes, you know, like yeah, it is. It's vignettes. I wrote that first book on my phone. Uh, I wrote really on your yeah, phone. Pretty, I did an edit on the computer when it was done, but I wrote that one like like pretty much all the way on the phone. Oh, did I die again? No, I can, we're good. We're good. Okay. All right. Cool. It's uh, it might it might. Die I can't soon. believe you wrote that. We're almost done. And I can't believe you wrote that on your phone. Yeah, I just did a couple chapters a day on the phone, so uh, and then emailed it to myself, and then eventually like plopped them all into a little thing, and then I then started trying to tie it together, and I didn't do that. Thing. But yeah, it was that one's. And then I've done a lot of. I do a lot of. You know, I did like the other two that I did. That I have like a, chunks that I wrote on the phone, and then uh, some chunks that I did on paper with pen. Which a lot of people say they prefer paper and pen for writing. I think it is. It's like a nice to to flex that little um, to do that. But I think that um, I always kind of like I I do like the uh, technology, like writing technology. You know, being able to type stuff is quicker. Yeah. Copy copy and paste. The computer really does some things man the computer's a crazy little thing man. i like to do both i feel like i don't know why but i get better ideas when i write freehand but i can be faster yeah. when i type so i can like i like to do a little bit of both you know yeah uh yeah i forget to write with the pen sometimes because it's so slow you know it's it like so i mean slow. but that it forces you to slow down and think about it in a different way it's i got i probably should do it more actually but and are then like writing, yeah are you writing anything now like another book or i i had some ideas for books but nothing that really made me want to sit down when, when i do the books i tend to try and do way less other shit just so i can focus a little more especially the the second one was definitely that but the second one i was getting bread like to write it like it was a 
uh, medium hit me up like do you want to do a serialized book where you drop the drop like the chapter a day or whatever um you're not that yeah. like yoga yeah that was aztec yeah aztec yoga so that that one i literally i just cleared the fucking sketch and just did the shit you know um and i like that actually i wanted to and then the one with the thrash i don't know if you've seen that one but uh that was the one that's like a thirty thousand word uh run on sentence and that's oh, like no, a, i didn't see that it's like a long poem i i didn't uh i like uh it, you know i just like basically printed it myself had the you know a couple boxes at the crib and then uh sold it off instagram but uh i might do i might do another little printing on that because i did like ended up doing like three little printings on it but uh it's like yeah that's a good one I, i'm out when you talk about it. independent stuff you seem so happy you know like when you were talking yeah. about like being in a set like schedule it, you seemed not as like free as when you talk about like being independent yeah. and doing what you want to do yeah definitely i mean yeah that's a I, I prefer i prefer this model you know i like there are moments where i'm like to use a little more bread but aside from that you know i do prefer the model like you know so it's just like uh it uh makes for more it makes for more ability to do the thing too it's just like it's a it begets more art you know it gets yeah you can stretch your creative mind and when you decide if you decide to like settle back down you've put those closer to that 10,000 you know even if you like yeah you put more it's like not yeah you put more time, into it but yeah. it's like but yeah you're putting a yeah, lot but it is, of practice, it is practice it. too i mean it yeah. is yeah that's the thing it's a it's a continual it's a practice you know i yeah. like i let i let a lot of the practice hang out like you can see it but uh it's there regardless if anyone's you know and that, that's the other thing it's like hella rappers have that many songs they just don't put them out you know like i, I remember recording with dell uh the funky homo sapien shout out. <laughs> and uh <laughs> shout out though uh but like fucking i remember so he was playing a couple joints that he hadn't put out i was like oh these are tight so i happened whatever whatever and then i just noticed as he like clicked out of that folder it was just like hell a joint hell unreleased joint and I was like, wait, that's all, that's all unreleased out? He's like, yeah, that's, it was like, dude. And I was like, and then I was like, yeah, of course that makes sense. Like, yeah, you talk about, I mean, you think about like Tupac died and then dropped more albums dead than he did alive, right? Yeah. Um, uh, fucking, I mean, the other thing is like, he probably was hiding out Cuba for a while and then officially died. Cause you know, he had a, maybe, I don't know. You think, I, I definitely, you think he, you think he didn't die right away? Uh. I kind of like go back and forth. Every time I sit down to read about it, I start thinking he might have stayed alive. I don't think he's still alive now if he did, but maybe he is. And he just didn't. I don't know. Uh, but uh, I, I don't know. I kind of like I'm a. I'm not gonna say one way or the other. I really don't know. Are you a conspiracy guy? I I like them. You know, I find them interesting because I know that like uh, you know, the more the more lies you realize you've been told reading history and going to school, like the more it makes sense that a lot of this shit could be, you know, but then you're also and like, psychedelics. No like the more psychedelics you do, the more you're like, Oh, I mean, the psychedel- world's not, uh, not what you, uh, everyone's telling you it is originally. Yeah. I think that really helps you get to that realization for Sully. But, uh, yeah. but it also like, um, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of shit that's like, uh, considered conspiracy theory. That's like, might as well just be like, you know, nine eleven was an inside job. I don't know if they exploded the building or if it really was the Jets. I don't care about the specifics of that, you know, like rest in peace to the people and all that stuff. But politically, you see what was happening before and after, obviously. I mean, yeah. you know, it, even if Bush himself, quote unquote, didn't know about that shit, you know, the whoever it it's was like, was, yeah, <laughs> whoever was walking that dude from door to door, you know, <laughs> whoever like pays his security guards and shit, yeah. uh, our, our tax dollar, whatever. But, but you know, like, whatever. I, I don't, we don't have to get down that, that road, but I mean, the Pentagon's some real shit, the CIA is some real shit. This is on paper. This isn't real history, you know, like you look at the shit, it's like, uh, you read real history, like, damn, like the fact that nobody knows about this shit is a conspiracy because like this is on record. And this yeah, is because you look you at know? the start of Vietnam and that start over over lies. And then you're like, oh, yeah, well, why wouldn't they do that today? Like, why wouldn't they yeah. do that then start? Yeah, shit over. Literally. I mean, like the whole reason that I'm sitting in California right now and it's America and not Mexico was started over a lie that the United States told. They went over and like fucking plopped an army right over the border. And you know, tried to provoke some shit, 
didn't really work. So they had to overblow that story and start that whole war and then took like half of Mexico. That's now United States. You know, they did that all over Latin America. They did it in fucking, they do like, oh, I mean, I'm 99% sure that every last fucking war that America has been involved in, and they've been involved in wars for 98% of their history somewhere has been on fucking purpose with some lies. You know, it's like the literally- The military industrial complex is a real thing. It's a money-making well, yeah. machine that you yeah. can make more money than any business ever of killing people. Like that yeah. is- Yeah, I mean, cause yeah, I mean, it's not even the killing people that's made, they're going in with the specific aim of getting this or that resource, you know, oil mm -hmm. over here, lithium, uh, cobalt, like whatever, copper, iron, like resource rich places, figuring out like what you could get out, how you can exploit, you know, like sometimes they don't have to quote unquote resort to war, but they do other types of violences. They, you you yeah. just, or you just get like, you know, I mean, yeah, neo-colonialism is like, you know, like the, the sort of like sublimated war, essentially a sublimated imperial war where it's just like, you know, use it by hook and crook via whatever capitalist means you have, you know, you influence, uh, you know, markets to the point where you all of a sudden are controlling things, you know, like from afar with some, with a puppet installed, you know, that you might have armed the rebels that put that puppet there, you know, like, yeah. You know, that's the whole shit. That's what they they ran that game plan in like, all over Latin America. And then they're running it currently still in Iraq and Afghanistan, even though it's mission accomplished twice in Iraq now. Uh, it's yeah. still they still there, you know, like they pull some troops out, put some troops back in. They still in Iraq. They say they're about to leave Afghanistan. You know, they're not. You know that they fucking armed the fucking Taliban. You know that they armed Al Qaeda. They armed ISIS. I'm sure they haven't proven that yet. But like, why not? If you look at everybody, you know, Mujahideen, they armed, trained, fucking like literally just like they, it's the whole shit. They playing it from afar, you know, like they don't even need to set boots in places no more. That's probably why they trying to think like they can afford at this point to be like, oh yeah, well, we, but it's like, no, yeah, the whole shit is, um, so yeah, there's like enough shit that's like literally on record that you don't have to go down the conspiracy, but you can see this is what it is. The conspiracy shit might fill in some details as to oh this. And that's like a bad that. word. Conspiracy has such like negative connotations. To yeah, it. like yeah, I think it is. Uh, I think there's also like um, by intent, you know. I think that like a lot of quote unquote conspiracy theories are psyops, you know. Mm -hmm. like, like I think that QAnon as a conspiracy theory is a psyop to basically take all of the shit that not all the shit because a lot it goes pretty like I don't know about all this, but I think there's some. You know, CIA and all them shit and Pentagon. There's some satanic aspect, I'm sure. Like, you know, I'm sure a lot Look of fools in those emails that were leaked in 2016. It was the WikiLeaks, the Podesta emails. I mean, there was talk yeah. of literal devil worship in yeah those emails. Yeah. Not to get yeah. like, but like that's the yeah. literally effect. Yeah, and that's the that's the more esoteric shit. The real shit is like the sex trafficking that like both sides of the aisle have been complicit in and you got flight records to that you know like this is like fly, flies 26 times to epstein's island like exactly yeah. i mean and so did trump and yet so did, yes the whole, and the whole shit when when epstein dies they're like oh bill clinton killed him it's like bill and bill clinton and fucking donald trump did it together bro like what are you talking about like there's photos of them hanging out. They're boys. Like they're pretending yeah. to hate each other. You know, like the, there's literally no difference it's WWE. between like WWE. Like, yeah, it's like yeah, those it's guys, like they're not wrestling exactly. when you go home after. You yeah, know, like. that fool was literally on WWE. It's you know like that like they, it was the, the first America's first wrestler president. You know, yeah. like and I mean, but they all been so he's the 45th wrestler president, really. But <laughs> I mean, George fucking Washington was the richest man in the United States of America and became the first president. Uh, I wonder how that happened. You know, it's like, yeah. come on, y'all. Every last president has been related to King John the first of England. How that happened, man? It's like, come on, y'all. So like, yeah, you, it's just like putting the dots together. But yeah, yeah, conspiracy theory, whatever, whatever. They, that people like to, 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 you know, obviously that someone's trying to, it's been, I think, actively, it's a way of, you know, muddling you know, information essentially be like, all right, like David Ick, he knows how to outline how banking uh, manipulates the entire world. But then he has to throw in, but these guys are lizards too. 
you know, like you don't have to go all the way there. Maybe if you really on one and you like, you know, sometimes if I'm on a psychedelic, be like, shit, maybe it could be some lizard too. Fuck it, I don't know. But like, that's that's not even the fucking point. Like the point is he's he's breaking down. Like I mean, the the class information at hand in there when you quote unquote follow following the money is literally. I mean, that's what Marx wrote that whole book about. It, is the capital is like yeah. is really follow the fucking money. That's what history is. That's like. Literally, human history is fall of fucking money, you know? So it ruins your mental, like it ruins your, like it takes out. That's why, like, Ick or like Alex Jones, it's like they go crazy because if you focus so much on something, it like takes over, like that. Yeah. And when you exactly. focus on all the fucked up shit, it just keeps going and it takes over your life, you know? Yeah. Totally. I, went down, no, I that's definitely why, went down those routes. Yeah. That's, that's why I really think it's ops sometimes because it's like basic or psyops, you know? Like it's really like, Sometimes it's like, okay, this this is like laying it all out and then creating a path for you to go off so that not only do you get the wrong idea, but like now these ideas that are anything that any seedling of truth that was in that conspiracy theory is now like like seems crazier to anyone that hasn't, you know, like yeah, like now all of a sudden someone's like, oh yeah, man, uh you know, banking is fucking this, you know, like capitalism is pretty fucked up because bank, you know, like, and also lizard people exist. So now whoever is like, done, not done any reading on the subject is like, all right, well, whoever thinks that also thinks lizard people is, you know, like, it's completely to that effect, I think, by intention. And obviously, again, another, you know, whatever. But like, that's the history people conspiring to do shit right you know yeah like you look at the stuff going on right now and it's like if you look at the facts it's one way but the narrative it's it's uh yeah but you can't go down that because then you get it's just you can though that's that's the thing you just need to have a leash on you keep a leash on because you're like look man like whatever like the real world is like uh you know like and it is so many you know it's a very subjective it's like eight billion people each with their own entire consciousness you know, like very different ideas of what this all is, you know, and uh, and probably more than eight billion people. If you want to get into like alien life forms, is another thing, or like the fact that like time travel, you know, whatever we can do, yeah. you do that shit all day, and it's I think good thought exercises and helps you iron to shit out. But end of the day, there's also like a collectively agreed upon objective, quote unquote, objective reality that you have to respect at least, you know, yeah. like. You know, and you could be like, I don't believe this, that, and the third, but you have to, like, respect that, that, like, belief makes things true enough, you know, like. Yeah, like, like I, I feel like I'm turned into Rogan talking about DMT every episode, but it's like, when sure. I when I first did, D, when I did DMT the first time, and I was trying to, like, explain to other people who hadn't done it, you yeah. sound kind of crazy, and you're like, oh, they're. I just have to realize that that's a part of my reality now and use it in a way that's part of the collective good. I can't just be going around being like, I talked to Buddha to everybody. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like understand. Some, exactly. It's like, you know, like nobody really needs to know you talk to Buddha except for you and Buddha, you know, or whatever. <laughs> but like, but also let people know, like sometimes people yeah. like this fool probably would appreciate that I talked to Buddha. He might have talked to Buddha too. Let's shop it up. You know, like, like you just got to figure out, you read the room, you know, understand like yeah, yeah. Out for what conversation. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, no, I mean, yeah. Yeah, that's how I feel about psychedelics too. It's like, you, uh, you, you don't have to feel pressure to like teach everyone the lessons of psychedelics. If it happens and, you know, if they, if they come into those lessons, those lessons are there, you know, like, um, you don't have to like, yeah. As I think, a lesson of psychedelics too is like, yeah. oh yeah, I could, I'll have to let the ego drive all the time. Like you know, like I can, um, you know, like I respect each, like walk into a moment, like which is like, let's see what this is, you know, like um, and just you know be, you know, in the moment or whatever. And that's a, uh, I think that's a good positive. We went to <laughs> the conspiracy, but that's the positive of it. It's just yeah, like you, yeah. I mean, yeah. I think it's worth. I think it's worth investigating, you know, you know, doing your own research when you have an interest in history and how to, how you want having a genuine curiosity for how the world works and trying to find out like the truth. I totally respect all that stuff, but I also feel like you don't know, they don't know. Like I mean the official history books are obviously filled with lies. Yeah. Uh there's no real no one has the best hand. I mean some people might have more resources to get the handle on the truth. But like end of the day, like, you know, it's a very 
broad concept that, you know, I mean, there's just more to the universe that I think can be necessarily understood by a single human consciousness. And we're so but, young in our human history. They'll figure yeah. it out. They'll figure it yeah. out if they don't kill if we don't kill ourselves, we'll figure it out in hundreds of thousands of years. But yeah, yeah. We're just, I we're mean infants right now. We're yeah, we're, spiritual we're infants, early. world yeah, infants. Exactly. We don't we don't know. Exactly. I feel like, yeah, I think it's like some, you know, like you look at all the ills of the world, you can see it as some growing pains. It's like, all right, well, it might take generations of like a lot of, you know, like and I, you know, I want it now. Uh, like everyone wants it now and i i don't really believe in a lot of incrementalist tactics i i really do think that direct action is more effective and even incrementalist work ha only works when there is an urgency too you know like people talk about i mean martin luther king versus malcolm x is like they both existed and both yeah. were huge you know like and like you couldn't have had you couldn't have had you know I mean, that's just how you can have one. You know, it's like, a, like, it's like people only ready to sit down and talk peaceably because other people were getting, you know, like, yeah. And, you know, like, so I'm not, I'm not like saying like, I'm not like, a, I don't, I don't believe in incrementalism as a tactic, but I do understand that history moves incrementally, you know, and that, you know, you can be like super, I don't know, everyone has their own natural pace that they're comfortable with sometimes people need to adjust their pace for whatever situation experience blah 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 everyone finds a niche a role a thing like that everyone comes into their own like comfort as a human being i think um and and figures out at some point or like assumes a role whether by you know some people have more intent on it and some people or intention or whatever and some people um like don't <laughs> yeah think about it too hard and it just like happened they you know and there's any but uh regardless it happens you know like um mm. and uh i don't know i i think it's good to have intention though i think it's good to like try to be like you know like try to have an understanding of the world that you fit into you know like like i am doing what i think is like what I'm supposed to be doing or whatever, you know, like, like, I think that's, that's necessary and worth, worth looking for. And, and, and you feel that now? I, I don't know. Yeah. I feel, I've always like tried to like, uh, yeah, I've, I've always, I feel like everyone's like person in, um, in progress anyway. And yeah, I've always been striving to be good. I think like, yeah, no, I have, uh, that's I've awesome. been, yeah, I'm yeah. trying. Yeah. Yeah, and that's the the pursuit of becoming your best self is the the best way that you can do. Like that's all that you can do as a person is the pursuit of becoming your best self. Or, and that's not the best person out there, but it's the best version that you can be. Is what it is, you know. Fucking definitely. I mean, yeah, we all, yeah. yeah. And I, I mean, and I think that it also, yeah, it involves like, okay, well, what work is necessary of me to better everyone around me as well? You know, like. Mm -hmm. um, and then how can I, uh, yeah, uh, how can I move through the world in such a way as to, you know, leave it better than when I, or whatever, or move through a, at least a room. How can I, you know, or whatever, like a, a situation of fucking, how, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, there's, I don't even know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Man, this was awesome. I'm really happy we got to talk. <laughs> this was a this is a really great conversation, and I appreciate the music. I can't wait to. I mean, I'm gonna be playing that track all the time. And oh yeah, bro, I'm excited to hear the new album. Oh yeah, yeah. I think I feel like this little one, man. It's like, uh, yeah, I did like 17 joints is it yesterday. Called side swiped. Uh, I could have. Yeah, I don't know. Actually, I had a couple. Of, I'm not even sure what I'm about to call it, but uh, I guess you can like punch in the edit like oh it's called blah blah it's out today or whatever <laughs> but it will be dropping on the friday that that this is released. yeah and, yeah so um, so it's dropping today go check that shit out uh please pay you know money for it or whatever and um and what's your and instagram maybe, so people can check out your art and all of that it's a uh, v e e five times <laughs> so v v v v v one two three five but v e e V E V E V E V E V E V E V E V E V E V E V E V E V E V E V E V E V E V E V E V E V E V E V E V E V E V E V E V E V E V E V E V E V E V E V E V E V E V E V E V E V E V E V E V E V E V E V E V E
Five times. V E E five times. It's the dumbest shit. It's very stupid. I'll tag you. So people listening go to my I'll tag you in that. If you exactly. I, I, I hate doing this shit on radio and like, I know. like I'm that. sorry. Like, it's such like a part of the routine that, and it's so stupid because no one actually yeah. is going to listen to this and change their mind on listening the past yeah. hour. Like it's so stupid. And I didn't I should stop. I, no, <laughs> every yeah, every yeah, time just, I ask, I'm like, you fucking idiot. <laughs> <laughs> I like I don't know. I literally I haven't done it. Uh, I mean, I did like the homies podcast like a month ago. That was like the first time, like maybe the first time I used uh, Zoom in that way. I know mm-hmm. he used a different program, though. Some other shit. Uh, so um, but uh, well, I even say about that. Oh, Are yeah. You, but like on tour I had, when stuff opens back up. Yeah, uh, I was actually just talking uh, right before, like literally, I think like one or two days before uh, I was like, all right, nobody go outside. I was talking to my fucking booking agent, like, hey, um, yeah, let's get some shit right. He's like, yeah, I'll get some shit right. And then, uh, and then I was like, oh, never mind. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> okay. but I was doing, I was, I was doing uh, like uh, a couple of the homies, uh, they do like, they play jazz at this club in uh, the Black Cat. Um, uh down like um actually ended up moving not too far away um serendipitously i guess like uh it's, it's over there in uh tl tenderloin uh oh, yeah. and then and i'm i'm like i'm in somewhere but like you know right on the edge right next to tenderloin over there so uh technically somewhere it feel like tenderloin i don't know whatever who cares that being the case i'm like right by over there but they, they do like uh they kind of do like a regular night over there so they had me rapping on their stuff i did a few of those and then um Kind of, I gotta get back into that. I did a couple. I shot. Oh, them some tracks, matter of fact. But um, but yeah. So uh, that that's been mostly. And I was like, damn, like live instrumentation and shit is like it's been fun to mess around with that. But yeah, I haven't been, like. And I guess I did like uh, yeah, right before quarantine, not not too shortly, shortly before quarantine, I had. Yeah, I mean, I'd be doing shows. I guess I'll be doing more when when the shit open back up. Yeah, because yeah, I'd love to see you perform. I'd love to I'd love to see you live. But thank you for coming on, and I really appreciate your time. And I'm happy we got to make this work. Yeah, for sure, man. Definitely. Uh, just to just to fucking uh, do it, man. Like it was fun. Yeah. Like a, and if you're I'm ever super in New York, I'll, I'd love to uh, see, meet you in person. For sure, okay, bro. Right yeah, but, man. Um, Holler, bro. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks again. And thanks again for the track and all of it. Yeah, totally, man. Anytime. Man. All right. Awesome. Peace. Peace.